Yes, thank you. Um, so the, when we are looking towards um, uh, guidelines, materials, and so on, countries may want to um, implement uh, skilled breastfeeding counseling. What uh, types of um, materials are available at the moment? Well, I'm happy to say that they would probably get a lot of support and help from UNICEF and WHO and from a number of other organizations uh, in collaboration with WHO and UNICEF. Uh, we have been developing various materials. WHO last year, a couple of years ago, they produced guidelines on breastfeeding counseling and uh, the reasons, the evidence why this is so important and what actually it involves. And currently they are also developing guidance about how to implement the, uh, how to implement the program. And there are a number of training materials that have been available for some time um, produced by WHO and UNICEF and other organizations that can be uh, obtained on the internet, particularly through the WHO and UNICEF websites. And these are currently being updated uh, alongside the um, uh, alongside the guidelines and they should be available fairly soon. And there's also a lot of, of resources available for the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative, which is also important in, in having um, breastfeeding counselling. Yes, and so we have those guidelines, the Baby Friendly Hospital um, 2018 guidelines to, to lean upon until um, yes. the counselling guidelines um, come well, out. Uh, those are specific guidelines on what we mean by breastfeeding counselling and what the evidence for it is. Yeah. So there are guidelines already available for breastfeeding counseling. Mm, that's good. So we can look forward to um, breastfeeding counseling guidelines in the near future. Yes, the, the, the guidance, it's difficult. The words are so similar. It's yes. difficult to, that the guidance is more practical and the guidelines is more theoretical. Okay, yes, good. Thank you for that distinction. Um, so let's move on and talk a little bit about um, uh, challenges and some solutions. Um, breastfeeding counseling um, in, in normal situations and also in crisis situations, such as the um, ongoing global pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, could you say a little bit about some of the challenges and solutions in, in a normal situation? Yes, I, I do think it's important to think of them first before we think of a crisis because the in a crisis you will need all the challenges that you have in an ordinary situation. So we need to get the basics of breastfeeding counselling thought through first. And the, what what is important is to, is to ensure that mothers are taught before they, during pregnancy, that they learn about breastfeeding, about how important it is, but also what will happen at the time of delivery soon after delivery and what they need to do, what, what they will need to do to make to get the baby breastfeeding. And if they are prepared during pregnancy, they're, mu they're more likely to succeed. And then they need the help, which is provided a lot of it through the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative about the baby being put to uh, in skin-to-skin -skin contact with the mother immediately after delivery and not having any other any other kind of feed other than breast uh, really unless it's medically necessary they then that they should only have breastfeeding from that time and the baby allowed to attach to the breast and with the necessary guidance and help to help the baby in the first few days to attach to the breast in a way which is going to be effective for breastfeeding and to make sure that the mother knows how to do that and that the baby is able to do it and then to have support doing that for the next, um, the next several days and the first couple of weeks particularly. If the baby can 
is established in suckling during the, the first couple of weeks, then they're going to do have a much easier time subsequently. They're going to be able to continue breastfeeding more easily. If they don't get that help in the early early days, then it's going to be more difficult. And if they have problems, then it's going to be more difficult to overcome them. Of course, it can be done, but it requires much more skilled help. So it's getting things right for all mothers in the early days, which is critical. And then as the baby gets older, problems will arise from time to time. The mother wonders if she's got enough milk or, or she thinks that the baby is, is crying too much or things are not going quite right. And so she needs somebody who can reassure her and build her confidence again and listen to what she's worried about. And then, of course, in the, later on, when a, a mother is thinking of returning to work, or even quite early, but as soon as she starts worrying about going back to work, which in some places it happens in only a few weeks after delivery, to help her to find ways so that she can continue breastfeeding when she returns to work. There are different ways in which this can be sorted out, but an important way is often to help her to be able to express her milk and to leave that for the baby and to store it so that when she goes to work, somebody else is able to give the baby the milk. Or, of course, if, if the baby can come with her to work, that's wonderful. Or if she can go home and feed the baby, that's wonderful. But you have to work out for each mother what is going to be suitable for her. And that is a big challenge. I think that one of the major problems that, that women don't manage to continue breastfeeding, a, a very common one, is that they have to go back to work and they don't know how to handle that situation. But then, as you say, of course, there are the crisis situations. There, There are emergency situations all the time all over the world but now we particularly and, and mothers need help to from breastfeeding counseling in those emergency situations in order that the baby's um not going to uh, end up well often dying because of they're not fed sufficiently but um they in general, the kind of help they need will be similar to that, but the difficult thing is actually getting it to them. But now we have the problem of COVID infections, and we have that is becoming a new problem. And in a lot of places, people have are so worried that the baby might get COVID from its mother that they are separating the mother and baby at birth. And we now need to make sure that people understand this is not necessary that mothers can continue breastfeeding, that that COVID infection is not transmitted through the breast milk. And if mothers take hygienic precautions and wear a mask and wash their hands, then they can continue, uh, uh, continue breastfeeding um, and in, in the normal way. And that uh, babies on the whole, are not getting ill from COVID very much. Occasional babies get a little bit ill, but they recover pretty well. Yes. So this is something to, to make sure that people aren't out of their anxiety, stopping breastfeeding unnecessarily and separating the mother and baby. Very difficult to just make people confident that that's all right. Yes, and WHO and uh, UNICEF and uh, several other international agencies do have guidelines on this. And I think that's uh, important to emphasize that uh, we should follow those guidelines. Yes, absolutely. Um, and not be worried about breastfeeding um, in the context of COVID-19. 